Hello my lovelies, this is the Scarlet DM and today we're going to be going over your character sheet in Foundry VTT. This one has a lot of information, so if you just want to skip around, I have included timestamps in the description box. Alright, let's get started. Anything that has a character sheet in Foundry is considered an actor. This includes PCs, NPCs, and vehicles. Let's navigate to the actors directory in the top right corner of your screen. Any actors you have ownership of will appear here. To open up their character sheet, simply click on their name. You can also access a character sheet by double-clicking on the token associated with that actor. Double-clicking the sheet's bar will minimize it, and double-clicking it again will bring it back up. This is your player character sheet. As you can see, it is broken up into different tabs. Let's start with the Attributes tab. Here, you will find all of your character's basic information. Everything is editable, either by typing directly into the field or clicking the gear icon if it has one. Here, you can set your name, your race, background, alignment, and you can choose a token. You can also track your XP and see what your proficiency bonus currently is. You can directly edit your hit points, or you can let your character sheet automatically generate hit points when you level up in your class. As you can see, you cannot directly edit how many hit dice you have, but if you click the gear icon, you can make adjustments as needed or even roll directly from this menu. Underneath your hit die, you have buttons for short rest and long rest. When you click short rest, a menu will appear, allowing you to roll hit dice. You can also select if this counts as a new day, which will recharge any relevant abilities. Long rest works similarly, but instead of expending hit dice, it will replenish them, restore hit points, and recharge abilities automatically. Here, you can see your armor class displayed. If you mouse over the number, it will tell you what is contributing to your AC. If you wish to edit this, you have to click on the gear icon and choose a different calculation. It has some options based on special situations for different classes, as well as a flat AC or natural armor AC option. You could even make your own custom formula for a homebrew feature. For now, let's keep it at equipped armor as this is what you are going to be using most of the time. Keep in mind that adding classes in Barbarian, Monk, or Draconic Soul Sorcerer will automatically select the appropriate AC calculation. Here, we see your movement speed. Again, you can edit this by clicking on the gear icon and adding any speeds that you might have. Your initiative bonus will be displayed here. The modifier is dictated by your dexterity modifier plus any special situations, but if you would like to add another modifier, you can simply add it here. To roll initiative, you can click the word and it will roll for you. This will automatically put you into combat. As you can see, you can directly edit your ability scores, which will automatically adjust your modifiers. The small number on the left represents your base modifier, and the small number on the right represents your savings throw modifier. If you are proficient in a savings throw, the character sheet will automatically add your proficiency bonus. You can check whether or not you are proficient in a savings throw by clicking on the node. If you would like to make an ability check or saving throw, simply click the name of the ability score and choose the appropriate role. Here, a prompt will appear. It will display the formula of your role, in this case, a d20 plus your strength modifier. It also allows you to enter a situational bonus. It can be a flat number or any combination of dice rolls. If you have no special bonus at the moment, just leave it blank. You can decide if the roll will be publicly displayed or kept private. And finally, you can decide if you will be rolling normally, with advantage or disadvantage. To see the result of your roll, you can navigate to the chat log, and here it will be displayed. In the chat log, you can see the formula that the roll used and the result. If you would like a breakdown of the roll, click on the formula. Here, we have a list of our character skills, whose modifiers are automatically updated as we edit our ability scores. Checking the node next to the skill name will assign whether or not you are proficient, half proficient, or have expertise. The small number to the right in parentheses indicates your passive ability in any given skill. This is how you can locate your passive perception, for instance. To make a check using one of your skills, click on the name of the skill and a prompt will appear. You will notice that with skill checks, you can actually change which ability modifier you use for that role. These three boxes can track resources and are completely customizable. You can assign how many charges you have for each resource, and you can check whether or not they are refreshed with a short rest or a long rest. This is a nice way to keep track of a class or race-specific resource. Here, your death saves are tracked. 
You can edit them directly or you can click on death save to automatically make the roll. Keep in mind, it won't let you roll a death save unless you have less than one hit point. As you can see, it automatically tracks your successes and your fails. You can also track how many levels of exhaustion you have and whether or not your character has inspiration. In the next section of your character sheet, you can select what size creature you are. And clicking on the gear, you can add any special senses that your character has. You can select which languages you know and even add some of your own. You can set any damage immunities, damage resistances, damage vulnerabilities, and condition immunities here as well. You can set what kind of weapons and armor your character is proficient in, and even set tool proficiencies. This last option, called Special Traits, allows you to add any miscellaneous traits that your character might have that would cause your character sheet to behave differently. For example, if you have the Alert feat, checking this will automatically add a plus 5 to your initiative rolls. You can also add any global bonuses that you might have if you don't want to constantly add them when making rolls. Alright, that's it for the Attributes tab. Next, let's move to the Inventory tab. The first thing listed in your inventory is your currency. You can directly add any coins that you might be carrying. Keep in mind that your currency's weight is taken into account when calculating your encumbrance. You can see your encumbrance displayed at the very bottom of your sheet as this blue bar. You'll notice the blue bar is even segmented into thirds in case you are using the optional rule that uses tiered encumbrance. Keep in mind that this only matters if your DM is asking you to track inventory. Here we can see everything that is in our inventory and it is separated into different categories. It will also display the quantity of each item in parentheses, the weight of the item, if the item has any charges, and whether or not it uses an action or a bonus action. The shield icon indicates whether or not an item is equipped. This is particularly important with your armor, as you can only have one armor equipped at a time, which will directly affect your armor class. You can also edit any item directly and delete it. By clicking on the name of the item, you can see more information about it, including a description and certain tags that describe its basic functions and attributes. If you would like to make a weapon attack, click the die icon to the left of the name. This will give you a prompt in the chat log that will ask you to either make an attack roll or a damage roll. Clicking the attack roll will roll a d20 and add the appropriate modifiers and display the result. Clicking damage will roll the damage die with the appropriate modifiers and also display what type of damage is being dealt. If you click the die icon next to an item that does not have a usage, it will simply display the information about the item in the chat log. If the item is a consumable, a prompt will appear asking you if you would like to consume a charge. You will see the new number of charges reflected on the character sheet. If you use all charges, it will consume one item in the stack. Here you will find categories for tools, containers, and loot, which is miscellaneous items. Before we move on, I would like to draw your attention to these four buttons. These are filters that will hide or reveal items based on whether or not they use an action, a bonus action, and a reaction, or if they are equipped. If you find that some items seem to be missing from your inventory, make sure that none of these buttons are checked as they will sometimes hide the items that you are looking for. All right, next let's visit the Features tab. This is where any class, race, or background features are listed. Clicking on its name, it will drop down and show you relevant information. You'll notice some items referenced in the description can be interacted with or even dragged and dropped directly into your character sheet. You can also directly edit or delete any feature. You'll see that backgrounds and classes have their own categories. These are unique items within Foundry that have automatic progression. Basically, as you select your levels, it will prompt you to automatically add any features your class or subclass give. While 5e does come with all the base classes for free, it doesn't include most of the subclasses. You'll have to either purchase a module or manually add them yourself. I will be making a video about how to do that soon, so keep your eye out for that. Your features are broken up into active and passive abilities. Active abilities are anything that use an action, bonus action, or reaction. If they have limited uses, it will be displayed here. In order to use an active feature, click on the die icon that appears when you mouse over the feature. If you want to consume a charge, keep that checked. And if the feature has an area of effect, you can place a measured template. This will automatically fit your cursor with an appropriate template and you can click and place it directly on the map. Next, let's take a look at the Spellbook tab. If your character doesn't have any spells, you can skip this part. 
Here, you can see your spellcasting ability. When you add your class, it will automatically set what this is, but you can change it if you want. Your spell DC is also displayed. You cannot edit it directly, but it is dictated by your spellcasting ability modifier. As with the other tabs, you will see a list of filters here with a few additional, which are concentration spells, ritual spells, and prepared spells. Your spells are separated by level, and your character sheet will track how many spell slots you have available. You can edit this directly, or you can take a long rest to replenish your spells automatically. There are also categories for innate spells and at-will spells, but we'll go over that in a different video. To cast a spell, simply click on the die icon that appears to the left of its name, and select which level you would like to cast the spell. Keep in mind that you need an available spell slot in order to cast a spell, or Foundry will not allow you to cast. If the spell includes an area of effect, it will ask you if you would like to place a measured template. You can also choose whether or not you will be using a spell slot to cast a spell. This is useful if you don't actually want to cast the spell, but rather display its effects in the chat log for everyone to see. Here, we cast a healing spell, which is prompting us in the chat log to roll a healing die. Clicking this button will roll the die and display the results. If the spell calls for a saving throw, a prompt will appear in the chat log. Anyone who has their token selected can click it to automatically roll the save without having to open their character sheet. You can see important information about the spell displayed in these fields. Here you can see what components the spell needs and if it's a ritual or concentration spell. Here you see the school of magic that the spell belongs to. And here you see what type of action it requires and what the target is. This icon indicates whether or not a spell is prepared. Keep in mind that some spells are always prepared, usually from a subclass feature. You can edit spells directly and change any of its attributes or effects, and you can delete it from your spellbook. The last thing I wanted to show you was how to add new features, items, and spells to your character sheet. While you can add items directly and edit them to your needs, you could always navigate to the Compendium tab and locate the appropriate compendium, which contains pre-made items. The 5th edition system includes classes, class features, items, spells, monsters, races, and other useful compendiums. This is the free version, so keep in mind that it's not going to have everything from all of the source books, so you still might need to learn how to create your own items. To add any item to your character sheet, simply locate it in the compendium and drag it onto your sheet. This will put it in the appropriate tab, ready to go. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this helps. Next, I'm going to be going over how to create items, spells, and features, how to create scenes, and how to use NPC sheets. If you want to hang out with me, I stream a lot of D&D content live on Twitch several times a week. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.